Grace and peace to you, St. Barnabas. This week in my sermon, I spent a lot of time looking at Psalm 23, verse 5. And that is the verse of the psalm that goes, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And I find it significant that within that psalm, what we have is not the presence of an easy life, but one in which our provision is given in the presence of all that troubles us. I interpret enemies to mean not simply people, but situations or circumstances which conspire to take your peace and conspire to take our peace. However, around that presence of enemies, we have that it is God who prepares the table. We have that God anoints our heads with oil, and we have that our cup runneth over. Part of that has to do with the character of God. So even with the reality of enemies, that reality is surrounded and encumbered by the fact that God provides for us in the midst of everything, even when it's hard to see the feast that's at hand. And so I developed a guided meditation that you can find in the description below. It's a link to a, a Google document that will take you through a, a way of thinking about this particular verse of the psalm. And once you download it and take a look at it, what you will notice in the middle of the page is that there are two questions in two columns. The first is the question, what circumstances, persons, or situations conspire to take your peace? This corresponds with the part of the verse in the presence of mine enemies. You'll notice that there are, is space for three things to list. You can list as many as you want. Three just seem to be a good number to stop at. And then you'll find on the other side of the page, what has God placed in your life to strengthen faith, hope, and love, or charity? Now that corresponds to that which surrounds that part of the verse about enemies. Thou preparest the table before me. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. As you go through filling these out, I'd like for you to pay attention to how much time you spend on the left side of the page in the presence of mine enemies versus how much time you spend on the feast that God puts before you. And I say that simply because if you find yourself able to list many things that trouble you, I would like for you to spend at least as much time in this other column as well. See where your attention is being drawn. Simply notice. You might find that it's uh, set up to uh, basically be point counterpoint. That's a possibility with this. However, in your own prayer life, you might find that something that troubles you does not necessarily have its corresponding, um, its corresponding counter. That's fine. That's fine. The purpose of this is not to talk you out of your reality. The purpose of this is to help you find everything that God has given you so that reality does not become skewed. This is developed to be a short service of prayer. And so you'll notice that it begins with a recitation of the psalm, and then a collect. You can put a little bit of silence in between the psalm and the collect. And then this middle part you can treat it as a series of intercessions uh, or call and response. After that time of listing your points and counterpoints, you may then choose to spend a little bit more time in silence before ending with that final collect. Now that final collect is one we have in our prayer book listed for guidance. And so it is a beautiful prayer that invites us to consider God in our discernment and request that God save us from all false choices, which I think is one of the best phrases in the Book of Common Prayer. This is something that you may do on your own. However, I would like to go ahead and run through this with you. So if you would like to have a companion on this, we will do this together. I will put about a 15 second silence between the psalm and the first collect, and then we'll have about three minutes
to spend with these questions. What circumstances, persons, or situations conspire to take your peace? What has God placed in your life to strengthen love, faith, and hope? And where might you find a point and counterpoint in all of this? We will then end with the collect. And so I invite you into a moment of silence as we pray. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of thy Spirit, lift us, we pray thee, to thy presence, where we may be still and know that thou art God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to consider what circumstances, persons, or situations conspire to take your peace. What has God placed in your life to strengthen faith, hope, and love?
O God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment. And light riseth up in darkness for the godly. Grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what thou wouldest have us do. That the spirit of wisdom may save us from all false choices, and that in thy light we may see light, and in thy straight path may not stumble. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forever.